Okay, so hello and welcome back to another Unity multiplayer tutorial. Today, we'll be having a look at remote procedure calls or RPCs, which is how you'll be typically communicating between the clients and the server. This allows you to send a message from your client to the server to execute some logic, and then the server can also do it back to the client. I hope you're looking forward to it, so let's get started. So as always, there'll be links down below in the description to the GitHub so you can get access to this project and also the relevant pages on the documentation so that you can go and research into it further if you wish to do so. So in the project, I've duplicated in the tutorials folder the previous tutorial about connection approval so that we still have this UI for a password hosting and joining as a client. And I've got a copy of it over here for remote procedure calls. And it's simply just the same scene with everything set up the same way. The only thing that's different is if we go into the scripts folder, we've got ourselves an empty script called particle spawner. All there is in it is just a reference to a prefab, which will be some particles. And if we go back into Unity to the prefabs, we have an extra prefab called particles. I'll drag that in and you'll see it's just this really simple blue effect. It really doesn't matter what it is, but our goal for this tutorial will be to hit a key and see that particle effect spawn underneath our player. And all the other connected players should also see it too, but underneath our player. And when they hit the key, everyone should see it under their player. So we're going to need communication between the client and the server and then back to the client. Because clients cannot communicate directly with each other, everything has to go through the server. So let's delete the particles from the scene. And if we go to the player prefab, you'll see here I've added that script, the particle spawner script, and I've dragged in the particle prefab there. That's all there is right now. And that means we can start with the coding. So like I was just saying about needing communication between the clients and the server, we're going to need to be using MLAPI, MLAPI.messaging, and of course, Unity Engine at the top. Make sure you've got those for this all to work. And then to actually unlock those features, such as sending messages back and forth, we'll need to inherit from network behavior instead of mono behavior. Now, don't worry. Network behavior itself inherits from mono behavior. So this can stick on a game object, just like we've done previously. We've got it in a prefab. And if we look down here, we've got all this extra data. We can check uh, the ID of the owner client. We can check, are we a server? What the current tick is? Uh, are we the owner of this object? And various other things, as well as methods down here. Now let's back out of this and go back to our script. So by inheriting this, the only requirement is that the actual object that it's on has to have the network object component, which it already does actually, because it's the player prefab that we spawn in when you connect. So by having a network object component, this uh, component here can inherit from network behavior and all should be good. So let's start working through the logic step by step. So like we said, we want to hit a button and do something. So we'll go into the update loop because we have to check every frame whether we've hit that certain key. So private void update every frame we want to check a key. So we're going to say if not input dot get key down, uh, get key down, and we'll use the space key. So key code dot space return. So we'll say here, if we're not hitting the space key, then don't care, just return. But the issue is this is attached to our player. And let's say we've got three players. This will be running for all three of the players. And I don't need to check if I've hit spacebar for the two other players or however many other players there are. I only need to check if it's my player. So before this line, we can actually return if it's not belonging to us. So we can say if not is owner, which is part of the network behavior, then we can also return here. So the first thing we're checking anyway is, does it belong to us? If it doesn't belong to us, return. Then we say, are we pressing the space key? If we're not pressing the space key, then return. But if this player does belong to us and we are pressing the space key, we want to send a message to the server to say, hey, please spawn in the particle prefab. So of course with the RPC, you can do whatever you like here. You could uh, get it to play a sound effect, spawn a particle effect like what we're doing. You could get it to do 10 different things and then spawn a particle effect at the end. You can write whatever logic you like because it's just going to be a normal C-sharp method. If we make over here, private void, and we'll call it spawn particle. And we need to actually end this with a server RPC because that's just a requirement by MLAPI into a method here. And the one other thing we need to do is add an attribute. So on the line before the method inside of square brackets, you want to type server RPC like so. Now, if we take this method and we call it up here. So what actually happens here is the client will execute all the stuff in update. 
and then it will reach the spawn particle server RPC method. And instead of executing it on the client side, which would normally happen, because it's a server RPC, this will actually just send a message to the server, and then the server will run this method. And by default, only the owner can call this. Now, we have our own check for this, but that's not foolproof. Someone could easily hack the client and send this if you're not an owner, but the server knows if you're the owner or not. And by default, it only allows the owner to actually call it. If you want to disable that, you can say in here, require ownership equals false, which means that literally anyone can call this RPC. But we want it on by default, and it makes the most sense for most scenarios in a game. This is also a relatively simple RPC. We're just calling it and then doing some logic here. You can, if you wanted to, send across, let's say, the number 10. And here it can take in an int number, like so. So you can actually send data across. And we'll be using that in future tutorials when we need it. For what we're doing now, we don't actually need it. So you could read more into that on the documentation if you'd like to do so. Uh, I don't want to just cover every single use case in this one tutorial. We're going to keep it simple for at first. And you can add more. You could add a string, a uh, word, and then of course you could say 10 and then pass in a string. And that would all work. And the server would receive that. Now you can't just pass through any data type you like. There are limitations which are uh, written out on the documentation. You can extend it to have custom types, but of course that's a topic for another tutorial. So for our simple example here, what does the server want to do? It actually just wants to broadcast the message to all the clients. So let's now make a client RPC. So private void spawn particle client RPC. And if you didn't guess it already, we're going to add the client RPC attribute. And the way this method works is very similar to the other one, it's just reversed. So a client will call this and the server will execute. Now if the server calls the client RPC, it will then run this method on all clients. That's the only difference really is there's only one server but there are many clients. So all the clients will run this method down here. And this is where you want to spawn in your particle effects. So instantiate the particle prefab and we'll just do it at this player's position with this player's rotation, let's say. And that's really it for the full flow. There is a little bit extra we'll be adding here because if we just look back at the flow, make sure we're the owner. If we hit space, then spawn some particles or tell the server, send a message to the server to say, I want to spawn particles. The server receives it and it could do checks here. It could just say return and it would, it would never do it. It would never actually do the action. Um, in our case, we do want to do the action, so we will then call the client RPC, which will then run on all the connected clients and they will all spawn in the particle effect. With this in its current state, we could actually test it and it might seem to work completely fine. So we can go back into Unity, let it compile, and we'll do a quick build. So I've done a few builds. I'm gonna host, connect as a client, connect as a client. And let's say I hit the bottom one and hit space. You'll now see the particle appear under my character for all the connected players. I'll go up to the top right, hit space, you see it for the middle one. Top left, hit space, you see it for the first one. I can also spam it, you know, it works pretty fast. And yeah, that's what you'd expect. So that all works, but there's a little bit more we could do. Because let's say we are the player hitting the key. Now, what we do is we hit the key, tell the server, server tells the clients, then we spawn it in. And for ourselves, we don't need to wait for the server to tell us that we've spawned it in because we know we're already doing it anyway. All the other clients do have to wait, but we don't. So what we can do here is we can actually say, just spawn it in for ourselves at the start. And if we left it like this, it would work kind of, but we'd see an issue where we spawn it in, but then when the server tells us, we spawn it in again. So we actually spawn it in twice. So all we need to do is down in the bottom method, we just say here, if we are the owner, just like we did at the top, if is owner, return. And the reason we return here is because we've already spawned it in for ourselves, so we don't need to do it again. So now this is instantiate is only running on all the other clients, and that makes it more responsive for the player, because you don't want to have to wait till it comes back. If you've got a gun in your game and you're going to shoot, uh, even though the bullet damage will be calculated on the server side, the muzzle flash and the smoke and everything, that can all be done immediately on your own machine. So it's something like this. Now there's one more thing we can change, which is reliability. And by default, the RPCs are reliable. And what that means is that if there is a failure in sending the RPC, it will just try and send it again. And it will keep trying until it succeeds. And for most things, you might want this if they're important. 
but for just spawning in particle effects or playing sound effects or those kind of things, it's really not that important. If there's an issue, just forget about it, right? It's okay. So what we can do is we can say here, delivery equals, and then it's an enum, so RPC delivery dot, and then either reliable or unreliable. So we're going to say here, unreliable, because by default it is reliable. And I can just copy this and paste it down here. So it means that our message from the client to the server is unreliable. If it fails, then don't bother sending it again. And same for the server sending it to all the clients. If it fails for some reason, then just don't worry about it. So this is better for performance, assuming there's an issue with sending it. But at the same time, you technically might miss uh, a call of it if there is an issue. But you're not too worried because it's just a particle effect. And with these changes now, we can go back into Unity and test it all out as its final version. And one other little thing I've done, and I'll be doing it for all tutorials now, most likely, is adding comments to the various logic in our code so that if you're looking at it at a later date, you can read through it and it should all still make sense. So you can see why we do various things in here. So the final test to make sure it's all still working with those changes of reliability and adding the owner check, I'll hit space, everything still works. You actually see on my own, it's very responsive. It's literally immediate because in the same frame as sending the message, I will spawn it in for myself and then everyone else gets it when it gets to them. So you'll see over here, player two works, player three works, everything is all good. So yeah, that's it for this tutorial. We now have messaging back and forth between clients and the server. It's really up to you to implement it based on whatever genre of game you're playing. You'll be using this all the time, regardless of the genre. So it's a very useful tool to know how to use. You can't really build a multiplayer game without it really. If you enjoyed the video or found it useful, then please leave a like and subscribe. Let me know down below what you want to see next, and also feel free to share this with other people you think that might find it useful. Thanks as always for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye. But of course, before I go, I've got to thank my patrons. A special thanks to Francisco Lira, Liz Kimber, Sahila, Birdodai, Kat from Garfield, David McDermott, Evan Maxi, Yaris Letter, Casey, Katinka Mom, Lawrence Simpson, Melvin, Mike Troop, Rack, Sam Marcus, Ulfgrim, Andrew, Chris Diplock, Fury, and Dario. If anyone else is able to help support the channel monetarily, link to the Patreon is down below. If not, there are also links down below to other social media such as Twitch, Twitter, and Discord. If you could help us out by following on any of those or checking any of those out, that'd be greatly appreciated. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.